Um, okay, so we've got a bowl of questions that we are going to answer in turn. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much all these. <laughs> there we yeah. go. Yeah, and the questions related to like parts of glow up, like being contestants, but also like our life, life. like outside of the competition, mm -hmm. so that you guys can kind of have like a better scope of you know who we are. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I say this is like kind of like turn. Even more questions afterwards as well. It'll be interesting. So mm -hmm. we might as well just get started. Yes. Okay. Do you want to pick one? I'll, go on. I'll pick one first. Yeah. Go, go for it. Go. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna actually yeah go to the back of the bowl. Ooh. Right. So I'm gonna read out the question and then obviously I'm gonna answer it. So, best memory from filming. Okay. This is very much you and I related because for me it has to be the Coco week when Michelle Visage came through as a guest judge uh, and I ran to you to hug uh, you. <laughs> I lost my shit. I, like for me, it was personal, yeah. a massive fan base. I was enjoying the competition anyways. Yes, there's like the pressure of the creative briefs. Every week there's like an elimination. Mm -hmm. But I never expected Michelle Visage to come through. So I had like my RuPaul Drag Race brain but also a fan of Michelle in general, just like, I reacted more than I reacted to any other part of the show. Mm -hmm. So I have to give that credit. And that was my best memory. Yeah, the way that we reacted was so genuine. And like, I, I am not particularly um, screamy. I don't yeah. really do that. But like, and I was just standing, and then for them to just be like, please welcome Michelle Visage. I was like, oh ah! my god. Oh my god. Guy. Gooped. I died. Like, you know, I was fucking gooped. My it body was was <laughs> and I remember there was one point after yeah. the initial reaction because we all have our like our own like kind of like self enclosed screaming like oh my god yeah. Oh my god. And I remember then like they had like a little bit of, like filming before they like Stacy goes like Emmy Maisie, you have two and a half hours your time starts now. You were like your station was beside mine for the creative group that day. <laughs> And I remember there was like this like idle moment where there's nothing going on and I look at you and we just like hug each other like <laughs> <laughs> It was and very so, like, crazy. surreal, so surreal. And then she actually came and talked to us. Oh, how did you feel when you got oh. those like like one on one moments with Michelle? What was your experience like? I was cringing so hard because I was like, you you want them to think of you in a certain way and that's just never going to be especially under a competition setting that week i did a, i didn't do a good job i did mm -hmm. not it nothing worked out for me in my creative brief so i basically meet somebody that i i am a big fan of and i'm like <laughs> hello this is the sort of work that i do i show her and she's oh like hmm yeah. Don't know what it's just so, uh, and I can obviously I feel for obviously drag queens that come in front of her for for RuPaul and yeah. and, and the, she critiques them. I know it's not necessarily on the same level as that, but it was a similar feeling again because it was like cool. I've always wanted you to think I was I was a decent uh, artist, and now I've shown you the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> so I'm really glad yeah. that, that happened. Uh, oh yeah, my it was God. great. But it was definitely one of my favorite moments. Um, um, favorite moment for you? Your yeah, first favorite it's moment. it's off it's off camera. Uh -huh. um, you remember when the first episode of the UK Drag Race was aired, mm. and we were living. It in was house. a Friday night. Yes, yeah. of course. And we weren't filming the next day. I don't think. And we had we just, had just like, gone through to semi finals. Yeah, it was and the it final was a, form. It was like that moment of relief before the next lot. Mm. And we set up, we had this projector screen and we set up a big projector screen. We pulled the sofa in front of it. Yeah. I had a lot of wine. Um, Feelings and, mutual. And we had our our house chaperones, shout out to Lewis and Kate. Yeah. Uh, um, sitting, well, Lewis, uh, Kate wasn't there. Was Lewis she, was there. Lewis, Lewis, was, Lewis there. was like, like house sitting that night. House sitting. Yeah. And we all sat and watched it. And it was just really nice because it was a moment of relief, uh, like through all the stress. And we were all just like bonding over something that we all really enjoyed. And it, it was uh, just a, re a relax relaxation in the midst of all the stress. And it was a nice bonding moment. I think yeah. that feeling that you touched on when you get through like a creative brief, the elimination like has happened. If it involves you or not, knowing that you get through to the next week is a sign of relief. Yeah. The further along the competition went and you're still a contestant, like the more intense the elimination process would be and yeah. the, like, you know, the creative debriefs. But then the more joy you get out of knowing you get through to the next stage. Because, yeah, 
I think that weekend at the when we got to watch the first like episode of the Drag Race UK, we were you know the semi finalists, and we had a few days like downtime before the next brief mm. that would decipher who goes into the final. That feeling was so good because mm. after that it really was hit or miss like yeah. the finale would have been so intense the yeah. result would even be greater if you win that yeah that evening time we had nothing to think about like tomorrow is another day mm. yeah i say they color ties in with michelle i mean hey like if yeah. it's michelle on or off screen <laughs> or in person i'm okay with that girl yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pull out of the bowl another question for yourself hannah what does friendship mean to you Oh wow, ah, hit me girl, okay. hit me. Um, I am a very sentimental person. I think that I do well in like sm smaller settings, as in me and James sitting together, this is very comfortable for me. Like I feel like this is very intimate and I, I, much, I feel much more at home in mm -hmm. that situation. I yeah. feel like I can share things and it be quite sincere. Yeah. Whereas like if it's a large group setting, I find that very stressful and I just, that's why I found the house quite stressful just lots of different personalities flying around um friendship to me is intimacy being able to share things and being able to get that empathy back from somebody i think mm. we've shared an experience yeah so that is a connection that we have and i think oh, that is like a nice 100%. thing to have and i mm -hmm. feel like that gives you deeper understanding of a person under a certain stress mm. Yeah. Yeah. Friendship is empathy, and friendship is being able to not necessarily. Um, you don't have to provide a solution yeah. for somebody, but listening, and and being like, yeah, I absolutely hear you. you know? I think I know. I and we shared both really of those agree. moments through yeah. the show. Well, that's it because we've kind of like our friendship has been established from kind of a very like unique force experience like we didn't know each other before the show no. we know that we didn't know that we would actually like click we didn't no. know that we'd have like shared interests and you nearly like speed up a whole kind of initial steps and transitions from like let's say time for example that like can like you know form friendships over six weeks we really get to know each other we see one of those vulnerabilities mm. we also see our strengths like mm. you go through the mill in such a short period of time so it can be quite intense but you can also like reap really good benefits from that because you get to really know a person and mm. I think the show like being on Globe there's no other choice than being honest mm. so you genuinely know what someone's about and you know like where their intentions lie like where they're coming from like what this means to them yeah. and I think it's kind of almost like yeah shortcut to really knowing like what you know who is kind of like your correspondent who you're really going to get along with and yeah, like I definitely, I mean, face off chair, red chair, husband and wife, <laughs> the, feel, the survival like energy, the, like, you know, being a survivor, that feeling was a mutual girl. Yeah. Like, we knew how to push through the competition, like there was no tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah, like I would have to say, like what friendship means then to me will be pretty much the same. Like I need to like just feel the connection. I'm very much like a sentimental person as well and I can be totally hypersensitive. When it comes to something like how we met on the glow up, as a competition, I definitely went with a mentality to like fight through. So I was kind of fighting for myself. So I don't think I would, like, I really made sure that I trained to know that every kind of like experience we went through as a group, whether it be emotionally, like, you know, understanding everyone's mentality, how they were coping, I made sure that that didn't get to me personally because mm. I had to like keep my guard to get through the competition myself. Yeah. But also, you know, it was important to me to like feel and empathize and understand and relate to everyone's kind of like personal struggles. Like we saw like that day, for example, I think Bernie in oh, week, yeah. was it week three? Maybe. When it was like the there mask was still week. Quite a few of us. Yeah, there was still a good few of us. And like he had like his like emotional struggle and more or less like to a degree and on the scale of the show, his like breakdown of how he felt and you know how difficult the competition was and what it meant for him to also like fight to say in the show oh my god like that went straight to my heart and I was like I fear for you man I can't let this get to me because it's a competition at the end of the day but that kind of like those kind of like similar energy vibes like that's how I really were like you know mm. like bounce off someone else or how I'm really no I'm gonna like click with them because it's a like mutual feeling that I can like express mm. talk about 
and then from there the conversation will just flow you'll end up talking about so many other things vulnerability without judgment maybe. oh my goodness yeah. that's that's my bio girl yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so my question is least favorite episode on, on the, the show. okay so sorry my writing's awful no, I, okay um yeah this is quite obvious because I can imagine like we'll like talk like we're able to share this when the majority of the show comes out, even to the point that we're both in it still. Mm -hmm. Holy hell, the semi final like the semi finals guys. Ooh. Um Rankings Critiques, me showing my vulnerability. I cared about that competition so much. I felt like oh my god, I felt like like I just felt like crap doing that challenge. It's like I never had done makeup before. Any good critiques I got in like creative briefs beforehand went out the door everything was lying on that studio shoot with Rankin and it flopped like he didn't like it I really wasn't into it then afterwards I think that just curated so much self-doubt and I had like a moment with like we all got to talk to Stacy outside afterwards before mm -hmm. we joined each other back in the meeting room upstairs mm -hmm. and I knew I was holding my shit together because I was like I want to cry, but I wasn't there yet. Yeah. And then the second, like, more of us start, like, more people start asking me about it because naturally, when I go back up to the room and I had you and Eve with me because Ophelia went in to do her shoot next, yeah, we were so close by that point. Like, everything was personal. You couldn't yeah, hide the truth because we'd gone through six challenges yeah. where you can't, like, you can't fake it to get that far. You yeah. gotta be real. So it was inevitable that it was gonna like just come I streaming out of me. That smashed it. Oh well, listen. I that you had. Rankin made a point in the creative brief the next day that I was convincing, but I didn't deliver. Mm -hmm. And he's right because I felt like I had this. I went into every real life challenge thinking that I had it. <laughs> I said I did that red chair like four times, but <laughs> you know, learn from that, grow, whatever. That day I couldn't see the light. Every other challenge where I might have like thought I could get by yeah. and I end up in the red chair, I was like, look, okay, there's space to learn. It was the semi-finals, like the pressure I guess got to me as well. Yeah. And it brought back memories of being in school, thinking that I did things so different to other people, but in a way where it made me feel worse rather than like more unique and better. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, also yeah. the fact that I didn't deliver when I you were deliberately asked by someone, you were given a theme. You weren't given exactly what to do. That's a creative challenge because that's the whole essence of the competition. It was just like, God, it made me think that, like, this is the end. Like, it's kind of like, I f it made me start to think things like I had fluked my way to that point. When I was like, no, no, you know, everyone, like, works to get to, work, like, every, like, whatever position they're at. And, like, especially in this show, the competition. But in that moment, I just felt like a big failure. So, you know, it was awful, but obviously I recovered from it. But, yeah, I mean post-show, pre-airing time, it would be the one or the most obvious thing in my mind that comes up as like a post-dramatic like, mm. nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. like... Replaying like, yeah. in your mind. Yeah. Um, that one wasn't great. It, but I... the So, okay. So, so. That actual episode, I, I feel I'd done fine. <laughs> because <laughs> Rankin would like throw out the entire thing while we were shooting, he was going, yeah, great, perfect, cool. Yeah. Like, he's saying all these positive things, so I'm like, sick, yeah, I'm killing mm. it. So, <laughs> that was a very confusing message for me, yeah. because when it actually came to critiques, uh, it was a very different message. It's hard but when there's four of us, because half of us uh, had to be in a yeah. chair. And I, I'm uh, actually not, I'm not annoyed at that. that if was I was to rank that show, yeah. I was the bottom of the four going into that creative brief. Like, I... Really? I, oh, God, like, you know, when you look at rank and shoot, like, remember, half of us have to, by statistics, be in the red chair. Mm. We've seen where the red chair doesn't really matter. When it gets to summer, like the semi-finals, or the bottom, like the last four, mm. it's very subjective who's it. Like, they're picking out, like, they're fine-combing mm. what deciphers that like, decision. Mm. I say they battled between you and, but considering that Eve won the challenge, they battled between you and Ophelia. Just to literally give what sanction someone fifteen minutes less time, and a, so, and a potential, yeah. yeah. But also, it's I feel kind of, it was yeah. beautiful though. It was really good, but like, you know what? It's that's the kind of the myth of show. You never know. Yeah. You never know I the full know. answer. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. But yeah, sorry, just like. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, that what that wasn't my worst 
My worst, I'm guessing, I don't know what, we don't know at this point what they're going to show in terms of like how the edit's going to go, but yeah. there was a particular episode where our brief was superheroes and we did uh, Strictly Come Dancing. Oh. I guess I'm not its biggest fan, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be very diplomatic, but I, it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm not its biggest fan and I guess I made it quite apparent and I'm not sure how the edit's going to go out. I hope it doesn't make me look too much like a spoiled brat. It is a big gig mm -hmm. and yes. I can't dispute that. I mm -hmm. can't. It's just... It was a huge opportunity. It was, yeah. yeah. And I guess at this point in the competition, we're all sort of... It's a lot. It's very high pressure. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm miserable, you know. Yeah. It, 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 not home settings. You know, all of these things that come into play when you have to think about, like, all of us would never act the way that we did there in professional environments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That's, that's, that, that's a very, no, it, that is yeah. a really, is a true, yeah. very valid point. Yeah, 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 exactly. We're not going to break down crying when we're on a job, <laughs> do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's not the same. <laughs> um, I didn't get my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the actual makeup that they chose for the show was actually just a lash and a lip, and I feel like if I'd have done that, and Elston Powers actually had nothing on. Mm. Yeah. He had no no but, makeup on, it was just some glasses and a wig. <laughs> That's the so, like, so like it's kinda like do you think because it almost wasn't a professional setting that we were like we really were critiqued on something that was for the sake of television rather yeah. than what would actually have gone out I, d I did on the show and like would you think that, you know, it feels unfairly? I did feel that way, yeah, mm -hmm. and I know <laughs> hindsight's a beautiful thing so we can be like oh, that wasn't fair but like I just mm -hmm. didn't feel like it was because we have to do th when we're given a challenge we have to do something that's going to stand out yeah we can't just give you a lash and a lip because mm -hmm. we can all do that fine yeah but we have to do something that's more interesting than that yeah. and for them to be like oh I don't know yeah it, I... just, it, it was frustrating <laughs> semi-finals like there was so. four left they were like going through with a fine yeah. tooth comb like, no like picking out tiny little errors because they had no other choice to yeah and that was pretty prominent when Val in the prosthetics challenge there was ha like half was left and she mm. said to us five we have to go through this because you know quote from quote she said that there's mm. a high level of competition in here and that got to me because I was like it's good to know that they like appreciate it but at the same yeah. time this is the competition someone's going to potentially get hurt someone's going to go home someone's going to keep going forward to mm. the end so, I mean, listen, it's behind our box now, isn't mm -hmm, it? Like, mm -hmm. Right, so. Oh, it's oh the long question! It's a long one. And I'll make this a short answer. It said me never. <laughs> so, <clears throat> given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Oh my god, okay, yes, so. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I think I would have. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Call me out for my tash on the show. I think I'd have Freddie Mercury. Hey! Uh, I have dinner with him <laughs> yes. because I somehow can feel like I can relate to him. Totally physically unrelated. Like, as a creator, mm -hmm. as a person that stood out, as yep. someone standing out as a gay icon, and also as someone that I feel I wasn't alive at the time, obviously, but seeing how much more accessible it is to be someone with, like, representing the LGBT community as a creative artist, as a global icon, like, there's so much more that I think Freddie could own if he was alive right now, mm -hmm. like, you see how different the world is, like, the world is so accessible now to me as, like, a, like, mid-twenties guy compared to if I was his age back in the 80s, and, like, there was so much restraint, but still, he was so creative, and he didn't, like, stop no matter what. Oh, oh, uh, Brooke Candy. Oh my god! Just because I'm very interested in her. She's still, yes. I love her music, obviously, but, like, she's just very interested. That's, I went to one of her shows before in New London, and it, oh. it's insane. Just, she brings, like, yeah. queens up on stage, mm -hmm. you know, that are not, like, booked or anywhere. Like, she sees them in the front row. Mm, that's the one over there. <laughs> Let's like, let's fly to her next game. Yeah, let's go. Now. She's coming to London real soon. Oh. She's come from a very interesting background, very varied background, and she's got to where she is through hard fucking work. And yeah. I just think that's very admirable. And mm. uh, yeah, I should really rate her. Brooke <laughs> Candy. Uh, apparently she's really little. She's like five foot four or something. God. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> so, I have to go to work, but we uh, thank you, we thank you for watching this video. We were going to film some more questions, mm. but we um, 
We Man started drinking time. and eating <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> so. We were having too much fun. And that's like the main basis of oh, the yeah. friendship, exactly. everything from the show. Exactly. So I just want to say well done to you. Yes. It was amazing. And it was amazing being in that difficult, wild, red chair position, but sharing it more or less all the time with you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. if it, it felt like it made it easier because I know doing, like having like that kind of time sanction and being alongside you in that position, I was like, I always constantly told myself in every challenge that we both got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We and were like, yeah, yeah, we got this. Yeah, we we'll support each other. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Yeah, thank you. There will definitely be more of these. Um, I will definitely haul my ass to Vauxhall. Oh, making yes. Dreams come exactly. all the way to South. I will be making some videos as well mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So make sure to follow us both on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Empty Alien. You! J Mac Moa. J Mac Moa. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channels as well. And yeah, thank you so much for supporting Glow Season 2. And Yay. yeah, we really appreciate everything that's come our way. Definitely. Thank okay, you so guys. much. Mwah! Oh, that was in unison! Yes! <laughs> Bye!